Okay, this is it. Uh, yeah, we've talked about objective two, but we haven't really talked about what the stuff that was in the objective, multiplying and dividing rational expression. We we're just simplifying. So now we're actually going to multiply. You multiply rational expressions just like you multiply fractions. How is that? Top times top and bottom times bottom. So that's what it says right there. Top times top and bottom times bottom. You don't have to get a common denominator. Doesn't matter. I would suggest that you factor and simplify before you do this because maybe some things are going to cancel out and it'll make it that much easier to simplify. So down on the bottom, I'm giving you one other thing to help you simplify. Sometimes whenever you go to um, simplify as in cancel some things out, you might have 5 minus x, but you wanted x minus 5. You can get it to look like x minus 5 by just factoring out the negative sign. Make that negative x minus 5, and now they would cancel out and it would just leave a negative someplace, either the top or the bottom. So that's what this little thing right here in the middle is saying. It said if they're in the wrong order with subtraction, just factor out a negative and you can switch them around. So maybe that might come into play here. I don't know, I don't remember. Okay, so when you're multiplying, top times top, bottom times bottom, just as you see here, and you simplify if you can. You can't really tell when it's just A, B, C's, and D's, but you can down here at the bottom with this example. So I would not have done it exactly like they would have done it. I would have canceled out the 2 with the 6. I would have canceled out some of the X's before I even went through. It would, it would have made the multiplication that much easier. So let's see. Let's see it on this one. What do you think I'm going to have to do first? I'm going to have to factor. Let's factor the top and let's factor the bottom. Okay, so on the first one, it's just a binomial and they have a common factor of 3x. So let's factor that out. So 3x, and in parentheses, I'm going to have a 1 minus x. Okay, and the bottom of that fraction, open up my two set of parentheses x and x, and this has to multiply up to 5, so a 5 and a 1, and positive 5, negative 1. There we go. Now let's do the second set. Bottom's easy. 3x. Okay. Top, two set of parentheses again, x and x. Um, I need 20. How about a 4 and a 5? And it has to be a positive 5 and a negative 4 to get positive 1. Okay. So again, before I start like multiplying straight crosses, cancel out stuff from the top and the bottom. You don't cancel out a cross, it's top and the bottom. Like, for example, hey, this, this needs to be in red. It needs to be in red. Okay. A 3x and a 3x cancels out. And x plus 5 and this other x plus 5 cancels out. And what's wrong with the x minus 1 and the 1 minus x? What's wrong with it is that it's in the wrong order. So let's fix that. Let's factor out a negative and make that x minus 1. And now it's the same as the one that's in the bottom. But don't forget about the negative sign that's left over. Switch back to blue. OK, OK. Um, is there anything that I left uncanceled? Nah, man. So I have the negative from the first one and only x minus 4 for the last one. And you could distribute that through if you wanted to and make that x minus, or 4 minus x. Isn't that crazy? Look at that complicated thing, and it turns out to be just 4 minus x. It's a little satisfying, too. Okay. Um, yeah, so there you go. So dividing, how do I divide two fractions? I take the second one, and I flip it, and then I multiply it. I think there's, like, some math teachers that say something like, Dividing two fractions is the easiest pie. You flip the second one and you multiply. I don't know, something like that. But that's what you do. You flip the second one and then you multiply top times top, bottom times bottom. So just as you see right there in the middle, I take that second one and flip it, and then I can multiply them straight across. Factor and simplify as necessary. So let's give that a try. Right. Well, no, here's another example, of course. Okay, and the property A a divided by B, all divided by C divided by D. Flip the second one, multiply straight across. 
Okay, down here at the bottom with the actual example, 7 divided by x plus 1, all divided by x plus 2 divided by 2x minus 3. Notice nothing cancels, nothing um, simplifies or factors, so you just have to flip the second one, multiply it straight across, and you don't have to worry about foiling that out. Just leave it in factored form, that's going to be okay. All right, Save yourself a little bit of time. So let's divide on this one. 7x blah 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 blah, you can read it. Okay, factor first step. So we can cancel stuff out um, and make this a little bit easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to both factor and flip the second one at the same time. Ooh, two steps at once. So on the top, doesn't seem fine, doesn't factor, 7x. Bottom, I can factor out a 2. So 2 and then an x minus 5. Change this to multiply, flip it. So when I flip it, this top that's over here, it just has a common factor of x, and this would be x times x minus 6. It's now going to go on the bottom. x times x minus 6. Okay, and this part down here, which would factor as um, x and x, I need 30. I have to add up to negative 11. It's easy, and that is easy in both negative. So x minus 5 times x minus 6. And of course, these things are made so that they cancel stuff out pretty easily. Red. Okay, I, I, got, I got the red covered, don't worry. And, and cancels out. And, and cancels out. Hey, don't forget, there's an x right here can cancel out with this x. And what's left over? A big fat seven halves. And that's it. This whole thing is just seven halves. Very satisfying. Okay. All right. Um, so multiply, multiply straight across, divide, flip the second one, multiply straight across, of course, factor it, cancel out stuff before you multiply straight across and make it a lot easier on yourself. So here, two of them for you to practice on your own. This is the first time this whole entire lesson where you've got to tr try something on your own. I bet you're pretty excited about it. So go ahead and pause the video, come back and check to see if your answers are right. Okay, let's see. Were these your answers? Let's hope so. Um, so over there on the, the first one, number one, factor top and bottom, canceled out x minus five, so that was the obvious part. Now down here, take a look what I did. I made 2x squared into 2x times x. You didn't have to do that, but I wanted to make it clear that it was 2x that was canceling with this 2x. Um, I could have seen it as 2x over 2x squared, and whenever I divided, of course the 2s would cancel. And now remember, whenever you're dividing with like exponents, what happens to the alike bases? You subtract the exponents. So I would have x divided by x squared, which is just equal to 1 over x. It's actually x to the negative 1 power goes to the bottom. Right, okay, you get it. Okay, um, and then over here on number 2, factoring as usual. Again, there's a little hint here. This had a 3x, plus 5, a 3x squared plus 5x. Had a 3 and a 5 together. Kind of a hint that whenever you go to factor the left-hand side, that it's probably going to be a 3x and a 5 in there. Um, yeah, so that was the only thing that canceled out, and then you just multiply straight across. There you go. Pretty easy, right? Multiplying two rational expressions, you multiply straight across, top to top, bottom top to bottom. You want to factor first so you can cancel out anything that they might have in common across the top and the bottom. Okay, dividing, you multiply, but after you flip the second one, just like that, right? And then you multiply it straight across. So that concludes our lesson. Jam-packed lesson, lots of stuff in here. Direct uh, and inverse and joint variation for that first objective. And then for the second one, talking about something completely unrelated. Unrela yeah, I know, that's just the way we do it here. Um, where we're simplifying multiplication and division problems involving algebraic expressions, okay? So here now, 
the little Charlie Brown cartoon, you can understand what the heck he's saying now. Ever notice that? The number of people watching is directly proportional to the stupidity of your actions? What's he saying? He's saying is, however stupid the thing is that you're doing, that means the more people that are watching it, right? Roland came up with his own. <laughs> Take a look. It says, getting into trouble is inversely proportional to how cute I am. What does that mean? That means, uh, since he's super, super cute, he's hardly ever getting in trouble. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, uh, make sure you get that worksheet and bring that to class next time. And uh, see you in class.